to go ahead and show you today is how to evaluate an expression. What we mean to, when we're trying to evaluate an expression, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the value for a given set of um, terms. So if you go ahead and look, we have the word evaluate, and that's when you see that in your problem, you know exactly what you're going to want to do. It's a lot different than when you hear solve or simplify. Evaluate means you're actually going to find you know, the value of your expression. So uh, right now when I look at this first example, I see it has no values. It has a whole bunch of uh, symbols. However, one of my constraints on for the evaluate is evaluate when d equals 1 half, a equals 1.2, b equals negative 6, and c equals 5. So that is going to be kind of the constraints I am working with. Um, a lot of times in problems, these numbers and values will change. So that's just something you have to be adaptable with. You have to understand there's going to be different letters and different numbers in different expressions. However, for this particular example, we have a D. I know that's going to equal one half. So when I want to evaluate, when I want to find the value, what I'm going to do in a lot of kind of key word we use is we use plug it in. So if I know that D equals one half, rather than using D, I'm going to have to use one half because I want to find the value in a numeric term. So I'm going to plug in one half. And I like to go ahead and put parentheses around that in one half. Therefore, that's making me know that, that I took that D and that's what I put in for D is that one half. A equals 1.2 minus B equals a negative 6. And again, the importance about the parentheses is therefore that I'm noticing that that's a negative 6 and it's a minus a negative 6, which will become very important when I'm... Uh, very important when I'm finishing off my problem. And then C equals 5. Okay, so first of all, 1 half times 1.2. There's multiple ways we can go ahead and do this. Um, first thing I just like, you know, think of it as 1 half of 0.2 it would just be 0.6. We can also go ahead and transfer that into a fraction. However, um, we'll notice in this problem it will be pretty easy to keep it in its decimal form. And negative 6 times 5, we know negative times positive is always going to be a negative. 6 times 5 is a 30, so it's a negative 30. Therefore, then, since I have two negative signs together, we can always think of, you know, two negatives always cancel each other out. It's like a double negative in English. It becomes uh, positive. Or you can say if you have 0.6 and you are subtracting the negative 30, therefore, then now you're going to have a um, 30.6. You're pretty much going to be adding that on top. So your last final answer is going to be 30.6. Right. Now let's go ahead and look. take a look at the second problem. The second problem is, is a rational expression. That means it has that nice little bar that's indicating we have a division of part of the problem. A lot of people get mistaken or they get scared when they see a problem like this. Don't worry. We just All we got to do is we know, we know we have to evaluate. So all we simply need to first worry about is figure out what our terms are and then what those terms, what the value of the what the value of those terms are. Evaluate, except there's no E there for evaluate. But we know we need to figure out the value. So we know that A, and yes, I'm changing it up. I'm doing lowercase and this is uppercase. It doesn't matter. A lot of times you're gonna see it differently in books and you're gonna see it differently on tests. You have to understand it's still the same letter, so it's gonna represent the same value, all right? So we have a lowercase a, we know a equals 1.2, so I'm going to do 2 times 1.2 times 4 times b, which is a negative 6, minus 1, put back my rash, um, my division, and c equals 5. Now, now the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure, and I've Okay. Uh, we need to make sure that we go ahead and do our order of operations. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure we evaluate the this premise first. And that's very good. That's what you get for working out of school. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate inside that premise. I uh, notice that inside the premise, I have multiplication. And according to my order of operations, I do multiplication first. And then I can go ahead and subtract the 1. So when I do a 4 times a negative 6, I get a negative 24. And when I have a negative minus another number, it's going to, um, I'm going to add that negative. So a negative 24 minus another 1 is going to be a negative 25. So I have 2 times 1.2, negative 25. 
over five. And there's a couple different ways that we can go ahead and approach this problem. If you notice right up here, uh, we have just pretty much multiplication going straight across, and then we can go ahead and divide by the five. Um, for those of you that do not like doing uh, division or this kind of two times 2.4 kind of scares you and you don't have a calculator you want to go and do something, you can also look at, well, I know that five goes into negative 25, correct? I mean, that's fairly easy way to look at it. So I'm actually going to go ahead and solve this two different ways. Um, the most common way is just to multiply across. 2 times 1.2 is going to be 2.4 and then 2.4 times 25 is going to be uh, negative 60. So you'd have a negative, um, negative 60 divided by 5 and that's going to equal a 12. All right. The other way you could also do this is also notice I know that 5 goes into negative 25 negative five times. So you could also do two times 1.2 times a negative five. And then when I multiply that across, I also get 12. All right, notice one thing with my evaluation. On each one of my problems, you're evaluating for the terms. So you're not equaling anything. There's no solving for anything. All you're doing is you're taking the values of the variables There is no equal sign, uh, and there's no you know solving or this equals this. You're taking the values and you're plugging them into the expressions. All right. Hopefully now you'll be able to be able to work out your own with this. Thank you.